Hello, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to the 2021 American Diabetes Association Living with Diabetes Ask the Expert series. Today's topic is health insurance planning. My name is Carla Cox, registered dietitian nutritionist and certified diabetes care and education specialist and your host for today's program. Our Ask the Expert series is all about answering questions from our listeners. So start getting your questions ready. For those of you on the phone, press star three, that star three on your keypad, and an operator will collect your question and place you in the queue so that you may have the opportunity to ask your question live. To participate online, type in your name and question in the fields below the streaming player. Press the submit question button and your question will come directly to us. Stay with us through the hour and you will learn useful tips to help you live well on your journey with diabetes. In addition, we invite you to provide us with your feedback in our five-question survey at the end of this event. Okay, now a little bit about why we're here today. Because of the link between diabetes and heart health, the American Diabetes Association, in collaboration with the American Heart Association, has launched No Diabetes by Heart with support from founding sponsors Beringer Ingelheim and Eli Lilly and Company, Diabetes Alliance, and Novo Nordisk, as well as national sponsors, Santa Fe, AstraZeneca, and Bayer. The No Diabetes by Heart initiative provides tools and resources for people living with type 2 diabetes to learn how to reduce their risk of cardiovascular disease. As part of the initiative, the ADA is holding this free educational Q&A once a month. We'll cover information and tips to help you take charge of your health. The health and safety of all those we serve at the American Diabetes Association is always our top priority. COVID-19 continues to be a serious health threat. In general, people with diabetes face greater risk of complications when dealing with any viral infection, and that is true of COVID-19. The ADA encourages people with diabetes to follow the guidance of the CDC and to contact your medical provider if you suspect that you are showing any symptoms or have been exposed to COVID-19. If you have any questions about the vaccine, please contact your healthcare provider. For our most up-to-date information, please visit our website at diabetes.org forward slash coronavirus or call 1-800-DIABETES, which is 1-800-342-2383. And now I'm happy to introduce our guests for today's event. They were with us last year and we enjoyed them so much we asked them to come back. It is Laura Keller and Laura Friedman. Laura Keller has been with the American Diabetes Association for over 20 years, starting in the local Seattle market as the youth program director for five years. And in that term, she worked at camps and youth programs for kids and families with diabetes. As director of state government affairs for nine states, she advocates for people on the state level to make insulin affordable and prove and protect insurance coverage and health care, and to end discrimination against people with diabetes. Working closely with state legislatures, volunteers, community partners, and coalitions to promote our legislative agenda through legislation and positive public policies that seek to promote and improve care for people with diabetes. Laura Keller, why don't you tell us a little more about yourself? Hello, my name is Laura Keller. Um, I love helping people with diabetes, been, as you heard, working for the ADA for a long time. And I also have type 1 diabetes myself. So it's a passion to be able to do the state advocacy work that I do. And I'm happy to be here and excited to answer um, any of your questions. Thank you. And we have another Laura with us, too. We have Laura Friedman joining us <laughs> to talk about Medicare Part D Senior Savings Model, which is designed to provide Medicare beneficiaries with new choices for Medicare prescription drug plans that offers a broad set of insulins for no more than $35. Laura Friedman is Vice President of Regulatory Affairs for the American Diabetes Association, where she has been now for one year. Prior to her role with ADA, she worked for Healthcare Services Corporation, the parent company of various Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans for more than 10 years where she was part of the public policy team managing issues related to Medicare Advantage, Medicare Part D, and others. Laura Friedman, why don't you tell us a little more about yourself? Thanks, Carla. Um, like Laura Keller, I too have been living with diabetes, um, type 1 diabetes, um, for me for 27 years. 
Um, and I, too, couldn't be more proud to be working to help create better access to insurance, um, drugs, and other diabetes technologies and devices um, for people with diabetes. So it's a great pleasure to be here with you all today, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you both, Laura. As we are waiting for our callers and online listeners to chime in, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off at the first question. Many persons with diabetes are very concerned about what they need to have covered by their health insurance. Can you give us a couple quick tips that may benefit our listeners? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. Um, you know, people with or at risk for diabetes need to consider an insurance plan that has the basic things covered like screening services as required by your treating physicians, uh, prescription medications, durable medical equipment, for example, that might be an insulin pump or a continuous glucose monitor. Maybe that is also um, an ins uh, a meter, um, eye care, and that's beyond glasses, so getting your eyes checked, um, podiatry services, diabetes education is super important, visits to a dietitian, as well as dental care um, is also something that people with diabetes should do. Thank you. Yeah, we forget about dental care sometimes, but that's an important component of diabetes care, as well as for care for everyone, right? Um, if you're just joining us, welcome to today's Ask the Experts Q&A. We're going to discuss health insurance planning. As a reminder, for those of you on the phone, press star three, that's star three, on your keypad, and an operator will collect your questions and place you in the queue so that you may have the opportunity to ask questions live. To, particip to participate online, type in your name and question in the fields below the streaming player. Press the Submit Question button, and your question will come directly to us. Now let's take the first question. So I'm going to start with Linda from Queens, New York. Linda, you're on the line. Yes, um, my question was, I've been in, I was an employee for over 32 years at the Board of Education, and I um, retired a couple of years ago, and so now I have Medicare and Amlund Health GHI. Uh, we got some notification that now they want to change it to Medicare Advantage, and uh, if you don't want to change it, then you could pay $200 a month to keep what I have right now. I don't have 200 for me and my husband every month. So I'm confused about this Medicare Advantage. Will it cover my doctors? Will it cover my supplies? Will it cover my medicines? Because I went fine all these years as a diabetic on the for protocol that they have. So I don't know what to do. Carla, I'm, this is Laura Friedman. I'm happy to take that one. Um, thanks for your question. This is really important. So Medicare Advantage, um, in theory, acts exactly like um, Medicare Part A and B. It is. It, it should mirror exactly um, the, I'm going to just say, the fee-for-service, the public Medicare plan. Um, it will be operated by a private insurance company, but it is subject to all the rules and regulations um, of, of any Medicare program. Now, you may find that there are, you know, broader benefits included in the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, without knowing specifically um, you know, which plan you had and which plan you're getting. It's a little difficult for me to tell you. But what I would do is call the new plan that they're recommending you enroll in and speak with them about the medications you're on, um, perhaps the name of your doctor, since there will be, um, uh, you know, a physician network included in that. Um, if, in fact, it will probably the Medicare Advantage plan operate much like you were used to when you had a commercial um, insurance plan um, and may in fact be, be even more broad because, again, it mirrors um, fee-for-service Medicare. Thank you. Um, I see quite a few sure. uh, questions coming online that are not uh, related to this topic. So remember that the topic today is insurance planning. So we will not be looking specifically at recommendations for um, diabetes care itself. So just so you know. Um, so I'm going to go on to the next one, and this is James. James from Lexington, Kentucky. Hello. 
My name is James. Uh, I've been diabetic for nine years now. And uh, Medicare, for some reason, uh, I don't understand why they are reluctant, and you have to jump through so many hoops to get testing equipment. I have another insurance that pays for my medication. You can have all the medication in the world that you need, but if you can't test your glucose, it's pretty much useless. And uh, I was just wondering, do you know anything, why why Medicare is so hard to uh, get uh, testing equipment? Again, this is Laura Friedman. I'm happy to take this one. I'm not exactly sure, um, sir, what you're referring to. If you're referring to test strips for your meter, um, there is a cap. Um, you, you are right. There is a cap on the amount of um, blood sugar test strips that you are able to, um, you know, receive each month on Medicare. Um, you may, I don't know if you um, use a continuous glucose monitor, but um, as someone um, on, I'm not exactly sure if you're on insulin or how you manage your, your diabetes, but you may be able to, you know, alongside your doctor, look into receiving a continuous glucose monitor, which is a, a wearable device that tests your blood sugar consistently throughout the day. Um, and they have expanded some access to that in Medicare in recent in the recent year. Um, and again, if you qualify, um, they do cover that um, very well. But you are right; they do cover test strips and testing supplies. Um, if you're not getting enough, you know, again, please check with your doctor um, to make sure you're getting the right amount in the first place. But but I have heard from people that they don't supply. Um, you know, a ton of them. Carla, I have a question. Are we able to, you know, ask questions back and forth, or once the person no, asks the no. question, are they cut off? Okay. Um, yeah, that's completed once they ask the question. Okay, so they can call that's back fine. in. But, um, it's sure, fine. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So my next question is coming from Evelyn. Evelyn from Magnolia. What a beautiful name for a town, Delaware. Evelyn? Hi, hi. Um, my name is Evelyn Holmes, and I think the person that just uh, asked your question from Texas, you just answered my question. He asked you exactly okay. what I was going to ask you. Okay, so we're good. So thank you for calling in, though. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we have a question from Parveen from California. Parveen, you're online. Yes. Hi, yeah. my name is Parveen Saban. I uh, have been diabetic almost 36 years. I'm insulin, and also I have very high blood pressure. I have heart disease, and also I have meningioma. I, might, I have a brain like in my skull. I have too many things going on. So right now, my I, I'm on Medicare Part A and B, and Anthem Blue Cross Medical. So I, the government and my doctor, I live alone. They want to give me some support, in-home support. I never took any help from the government before. So right now they are giving me some support. So I just I'm still reluctant and hesitant to take it. At the same time, it life became very difficult, all by myself managing all the medicine and taxes and paperwork and the food and groceries. So I am accepting the help. At the same time, I have a question that if I uh, take this help um, from the in-home support, do you think when I will be selling my home, I will, be ha I will have to pay, return all the money they help me? Are you asking, like, if they provide, like, a rant? Well, I guess I can't ask this directly, but if you are asking no. if, you know, they they um, set your home up with some type of ramp or other, um, you know, ways to help you get around your house, I could not imagine that that would be something you would have to repay um, the government 
with. Um, but I, no. again, I, I don't quite know that. I would be surprised, though. Yeah, there you go. Well, Thanks, Laura. I, I think this is Laura Keller, and no, I do not believe you'd have to pay for that. Yeah, or, or any other service. They're not going to ask for your – you sell your home – they're not going to go back and say, well, we gave you $10,000 worth of services. Yeah. You need to pay us out of your home sale. That, is, that will not happen. So this, this, this support is given to you without expecting money back later. That's right. And I will say um, there are provisions in Medicare in regulation that do state they are able to provide supplementary benefits um, that are not directly – um, you know that that make your your lifestyle easier. So this um, that would be something that would would fall under that. Great, thank you. That's a very good question. Oh, that was a good question. Okay, Barbara from uh, Michigan. Hi. Um, yes. Um, if a person is a diabetic and they choose not to be vaccinated, um, can and they they contract the COVID and they need uh, treatment. I uh, saw part of a news show that said that insurance companies uh, now have the right to refuse to cover um, the treatment for the COVID if you are eligible for a vaccine and you have not taken it. Do you have any thoughts or heard anything about this? I think there are... um... I, I have heard that some companies are planning to do that. I, I don't think any company would be making any changes directly like today, because as we can talk about later in the call, open enrollment, um, you know, will be happening in the next coming months, but they, um, there will be, they cannot make a change throughout the benefit year that you're in right now. I don't know what people's plans will look like. Again, I'm not a COVID expert. Um, the only thing I will say is, 40% of individuals um, with diabetes um, that, excuse me, 40% of COVID-related deaths are from individuals with diabetes. So, um, you know, there might be some incentive there to have an individual get the vaccination. Um, but again, I realize this is about insurance and not, um, you know, vaccination status. But I, I, I don't know. I think you'd have to check with your own health plan specifically during open enrollment. Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, we have a question coming in from uh, Debbie from Wisconsin. Hi, thanks for taking my call. I'm a new type 2 diabetic that was diagnosed in August, uh, April of this year. And <clears throat> when I was first diagnosed, I asked my doctor to uh, do an A1C on me because everybody else in my family was diabetic and I'm not. And I'm very grateful that I wasn't at the time. But his comeback to me was, oh, are you jealous? We have a good good rapport, so that kind of was expected. And anyway, my initial A1C was 6.7, and then my second one was 6.4 a month later, which was really, really good. However... I would like to get in touch with a diabetic educator because even though I'm a nurse and I taught a lot of people over the years about, you know, mixing their insulin and, and taking their blood sugar and all that other kind of thing that I did in home care, I still have questions now that it concerns me individually. However, uh, Medicare told me that they do not cover the cost of diabetic education unless the A1C is 7.0 or above. Is there any rationale to why I can't go and get it when I just have as many questions as somebody else? And maybe not. Sorry, I cut her off a little too early. Um, and, and I think the limit is actually 6.5 and greater, and she has a 6.4, which is pretty darn close. So if you guys could answer that, that would be great. Sorry, I cut her off a little early. To be honest, I think, yeah, I mean, I guess, so you're, you're saying, Carla, under 6.4, they don't cover the services. I, I would find yeah. there might be some other um, type of, you know, I'm wondering if it's, uh, I, I guess, then 
It's, if the yeah, diagnosis I mean, of diabetes is 6.5, less than 6.5 is considered prediabetes, and at this point in time, they are not covering prediabetes on most Medicare pro- pro- programs. So she can call the um, the hospital near her and see if there is mm-hmm. a there are some prediabetes programs that are no charge um, that are funded. Right. Um, so I would I would probably get a hold of a local hospital and see if she could get a referral there. Yeah, I was going to also say, you know, through, that's, that's exactly right, local hospital or, you know, her doctor directly, maybe have someone on staff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have another question coming in from Gwen. Gwen from Texas, you're on the line. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, I am uh, 70. I've been diabetic for several years, but my numbers uh, I can control pretty much in the uh, – below seven. Uh, my doctors asked me several times to try Ozempic because I'm insulin resistant. And I've tried, but every time I pay out the required um, fees just to be able to get on, you know, the monthly, the monthly is still over $400. And when I try and find other resources, like through the individual um, pharmaceutical company, it's always the small print that catches me that because I am on Medicare, which is government financed um, supplement, that I do not qualify. I do have um, additional supplement insurance, and is there any way to get around that? Or is Medicare going to change in the future soon where I might be able to um, you know, qualify and take it because I, I think it would make a considerable difference in my diabetic numbers if I could get that extra help. Yeah, you might want to call if you have, um, I think you're, what you're saying is you have a Medicare supplement plan, like a Medigap plan. You might want to call um, um, that that company and see what's covered. Also, if you have a Part D, a Medicare Part D plan, um, again, that's for prescription drugs. That should be that should be covered as um, as I understand it. So, um, again, without knowing exactly, um, you know, what's on your your plan, it's a little hard for me to. Um, yeah, you know, the other thing exactly, is most you know, insurance plans, plans have an exception process. Yeah, and most insurance plans have an exception process. So even if you're denied at first, you should talk to the plan that you have and the Medigap plan that you have and ask them what their exception policy is because you may That's be right. able to get your physician to complete a prior authorization and an exception process for you. Um, as the research and the data does show a lot of success for people using um, those types of medications. Thank you. I, I think insurance and Medicare um, supplementals are, are sometimes picky on which of the particular medications they're willing to cover and what the copay is. So um, there may be one, a, a medication similar to that that may be covered and like Laura said, I mean, I think it's good to call the insurance and see what they do cover. And is there a medication that's similar? Or talk to your pharmacist. Mm-hmm. Um, they should know as well. Pharmacists are a great mm-hmm. resource. We don't use them enough. Um, at the conclusion of the Q and A segment, you are welcome to stay. You are welcome to stay on the phone or online to complete a short five-question survey. Your feedback is very important to us and will help to inform future planning. You've been asking great questions. We hope you will participate in the closing survey that we have. Okay, more questions. So let's go to Kathleen in New York. This is going to be a challenge. We might not be able to answer, but maybe you can send her in a direction. So Kathleen. Kathleen, you're on the phone. Okay. Bye. Hi, my name is Kathy, and I'm from Albany, New York, and I was wondering, I have Medicare Part A and B, and I have New York State, well, Empire Plan. I was wondering what coverage do do they have for type 2 diabetic? What is covered as far as, uh, not equipment, but uh, 
In other words, if I finger sticks, uh, something more advanced than that, something, whatever. I know I'm not explaining talking, myself. Are you talking medications? Are you talking like meters? Uh, like a meter, like something you would wear on on your arm. It's for type two, though. Okay. Yeah, if you go on to Medicare.gov, you should be able to see all of the items that um, are covered for individuals um, with diabetes. Um, I would absolutely um, bring information about your insurance plan to your next um, physician appointment so he or she can make sure um, you have all the plan, you know, the, the um, the drugs, devices, supplies that you need. Um, most Medicare plans, and then additionally, as you mentioned, that you had the Empire, um, New York Empire supplement plan. Between uh, Medicare and that, I would um, I would expect that you have coverage of all the supplies and, and drugs and devices that you are um, qualify for. Um, so I would, again, uh, check with your doctor and then call your insurance plan as well. And as I mentioned, check Medicare.gov as well. They should be able to have a list. Great, thank you. We have an online question coming in. I see commercials on TV saying you can call them to possibly receive additional Medicare benefits. Are these companies legal? I think those are probably um, Medicare supplement plans. So what happens is Medicare part a provides hospital services. Um, Medicare Part B um, provides um, um, some drugs, but mainly um, physician services as well. Um, and then if you purchase one of these additional plans for a certain fee every month, they may provide, a lot of times they're known as like a wraparound plan, plan but those are some additional supplementary um, benefits that you may as well want. Sometimes they're vision, sometimes they're dental. You just have to look at each plan. But my, my expectation is if they are being advertised on television, um, yes, they are. They are legal. Great. But again, check, so check have, what's best. I always say check with your doctor. So we have a question coming in from Elizabeth from Virginia. Elizabeth, you're on the line. Yes, hello, and thanks for taking the call. Uh, I'm a type 1 diabetic. I have been for 43 years. I take two kinds of insulin each month or each day. And so every month this costs me over $100 right now. I'm 73 years old, and I thought that this uh, year people were going to start getting Medicare coverage for $35, $35 for insulin. But my insurance company has never covered that at $35. I'm still paying the same thing I always did, and I don't know. I have a Med Advantage plan with United Healthcare, so I don't know um, if you can, if there's anything that can be done about getting the cost down for um, for myself, because I don't. Uh, I use my insulin more than one month. I know I'm not supposed to, but I do because of the cost. So um, any kind of help uh, that we could get would be great. Thank you. So if you're referring to, yeah, the, if you're referring to the um, insulin, excuse me, the insulin savings um, demo, that's the Part C um, uh, uh, senior savings model is the official name of it. Um, what you'll have to do is, so during open enrollment, which begins, um, October 15th, so a month from now, I would first call your insurance company and find out um, if they are offering an enhanced um, plan. It's called a, it's a Medicare Advantage enhanced plan. Um, and those are Part D, those are part of Part D. You may have an MAPD plan, a Medicare Advantage Part D plan. The Part D side of it, um, if it, you will have to change into an enhanced plan that provides um, the insulin for $35 per, um, you know, per supply per month. However, I do want to caution you. 
I don't know exactly what other medications you are on, but before switching plans, make sure you run the numbers with somebody that can help you um, to make sure that if you are switching into a new plan um, that does provide the insulin that you're on um, for $35 a month, um, I, please check to make sure that adding other drugs that you may be on or other coverage that you need doesn't then make the plan even more expensive than the one you were already on. Um, I, I just want to caution you. I think that some people have fallen into that. I think the $35 a month insulin cap is terrific, but it just has to work for you. Um, again, you can start shopping for these products and you can call your insurance company and see if they're offering one of these um, benefit plans. But again, it will, you'll, if you're not already, you won't automatically receive it. You have to look into it. Um, and again, you can switch plans. It sounds like you're on a United plan. You can switch to another Medicare Advantage Part D plan. But um, I just want to caution you to just to be careful and make sure you're, you're being cautious about the other medications you may be on. Interesting. So I have a question for you. What does coinsurance mean? Laura Keller, do you want that? I can take that. Take that so, okay. Yep, mm -hmm. I got that. Nope, I got it. Cool. Um, <laughs> so coinsurance is your share of the cost of health care in your plan. And, for example, many times a plan has a copay or a coinsurance of 20% for certain services. So you pay the coinsurance plus any deductibles that you might have. Um, it, it can be confusing, but when you pick your plan, they'll line out for you how much that is. For example, if the health insurance plan allowed amount for an office visit is $100, and you've met your deductible, your coinsurance for that would be 20% of that um, visit, which would be $20. So the health insurance or plan pays the rest of the allowable amount once you've um, met your deductible. Great, thank you. I have another question on here that I'm gonna actually answer. Um, there's a person calling in that's concerned because they have type 1 diabetes, and you ladies understand that. You mentioned that. Um, and the meetings are all about type 2. And since I work with ADA, I, I, I would like to suggest that most of the things we talk about apply to all forms of diabetes, type 1, type 2, MODI, um, CF-related diabetes, because so many of the complications and concerns, like insurance, are the same, or heart disease or eye disease. So even though the majority of people calling in have type 2 because the majority of people with diabetes have type 2, it, it's really meant as an um, overall picture of the things that people with diabetes or elevated blood sugars need to be concerned about. So hopefully that answers your question. So now I'm going to go to Ermine, Ermine from Georgia. Yes. You're on the line, Ermine. What, okay. did, what was your question? My name is Ermine White. I was <clears throat> I'm type 1 diabetes. And I take um, insulin, the pen, <clears throat> insulin, liver mare, and logomer. Logomer. But it is very costly. But it's um is when it finish I go and, you know, get the um package. The package comes like four pens, each of them. So that lasts for a little while. But um <clears throat> like I have I need to have surgery on my eyes for the cataract. When I went, they told me I have to pay 
I didn't pay any um, co-payment, but they say um, for the surgery, cataract surgery, I have to pay $250 for each eye. So it was bothering me a little bit that I have to to pay it, but, you know, I, if I have to pay it, I would pay it because it's for my own good. But I was wondering what my insurance, Edna, is paying for me. I don't know because I think... So, either one of you ladies, um, can you help her? Who should she call to find out? Yeah, I think um, if she's on Medicare, she can call the number... Um, associated on the back of her Medicare card. There's like, I think it's 1-800-MEDICARE. Um, and she can, again, ex, you know, walk the um, individual on the phone through that um, and find out the cost. Um, further, if she has um, an additional supplement plan, I would also call that um, the, the number on the back of that card as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, if someone has high glucose levels, it does increase the risk for heart disease. Will the insurance cover a referral to a cardiologist, or will Medicare cover that? Medicare will, will cover your doctor's visits through your Part B benefit, so yes. And if it's a referral, or Keller, maybe you could answer this. If it's a referral from your primary care to a cardiologist because you have heart disease, wouldn't most insurance cover that or not? Yes. Um, what you need to know is does your plan need a referral or can you self-refer? So depending on what plan you have, um, you can either – find a cardiologist yourself and go, or if you need a referral. The best bet, ask your doctor for a referral, someone who's in your network, and that would be covered at whatever your plan's rates are for those types of appointments. Thank you. We have a question coming in from Anthony. Anthony from Pennsylvania. Anthony, you're on the line. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I have a question for you. I have um, I have type 2 diabetes. Uh, I'm retired from the railroad. Uh, I have medical coverage till I'm 65. However, my prescription plan runs out May 1st, 2022, which is in May, and I need my medication paid for. The only thing is, I don't know what my options are, except for the COBRA plan, which they want $400 a month. But it don't pay for the supplies, but it will pay for my medication if I get the COBRA plan. But I just wanted to know what will be my options would be, if I could get into another plan or how I will get my uh, medication paid for because my prescription plan runs out May 1st, 22. I hope I'm explaining myself well, but that's what I, I need some options. That's my uh, that's my question. So I'll take that one, and then um, Laura Friedman, if you have anything else to add. When you have a plan that runs out, that's considered a um, life change of life circumstances. And so at that point, you would be eligible to look also at your state health care exchange, potentially buying in. Um, depending on if you're retired at that point and you had a change of income, you might qualify for a Medicaid plan for a while. But you would be able to search um, on your state health care exchange and look to see if there was a an option for you to buy your own insurance. And what you would want to do is look for plans that cover the prescriptions that you currently need um, and then weigh that out against the price of your COBRA 
and see which is a better option for you. But you would have the option to buy a plan um, because you have a change of life circumstances if your plan changes during a calendar year. Thank you. We have a question from Geneva. Geneva is from the state of Washington. Geneva, you're on the line. Well, if Geneva's dropped off, I will answer, ask her question. Um, uh, oh, it's a comment. It's a comment. So her comment is you can go to drug companies and sometimes you can get your prescription at a lower cost, which is a true story. So if you, depending on your income, um, and ladies, you can certainly answer this question, um, but if you, it depends on your income, sometimes you can apply to the company themselves and they will help you financially with the medication. Any comments on that, either one of you? That's right. It should be on um, again. If you're if you're on their website, you know if you you know maybe Google the type of insulin you're taking or whatever um, drug you're on. There there should be like um, some sort of insulin or drug assistance program. Sometimes they they call it something like that. And but that's it. Totally right. Um, okay. And then another question is, what is Medicare? The thing to remember about those. Go ahead, Go ahead, Laura. Go ahead. I uh, just want to say on that last question, a lot of those plans are not a permanent solution, and they are often right. um, only available for a certain period of time. So you're only eligible for a certain period of time. So just keep that in mind that if you are able to get into one of those programs due to your financial situation or things, that it's not a long-term solution um, for your medications. Correct. A lot of times they'll give you a six-month supply, for example, and then you have to re-up for it again. Um, okay. So maybe you guys could talk a little bit about Medicare open enrollment, when that is, and what that means. Sure. So um, Medicare open enrollment is the annual period um, where an individual is able to make changes um, to their you know, existing health insurance plan. If you um, are on your Medicare plan and you don't wanna make any changes, you can just ignore this time of year and then starting January 1st, um, in this case, January 21st, excuse me, January 1st, 2022, um, your same plan will continue. You don't have to make um, any changes you know, to keep things the way they are. If you do wanna make changes, the period of time that you'll want to um, make those changes is from October 15th of 2021, so this year, it's just about a month from now, um, through December 7th, 2021. Whatever changes you make to your plan during that time will be effective starting January 1st, 2022. Um, and again, um, some people make changes from year to year, um, but if you're happy with your plan, um, you don't need to. The only thing I would like to mention is if you would like to take advantage of that $35 insulin copay opportunity and you are not currently receiving um, that, you are able to make a change for those plans during this time as well. Um, as I mentioned prior, though, I, please, please do make sure that all of your, you know, that you take into account all of your medications that you're on, not just your insulin to make sure that your costs, total costs, don't increase. So, so in getting on for open enrollment, I, I find it incredibly confusing. Is there a website or a place that people can go to that can help them or, or a number to call that might help them um, make the best choice for them? Yeah, for Medicare, um, I would go to medicare.gov. Um, you can play around on their site and learn a little bit about opportunities there. You can also go to Medicare Plan Finder. Um, I don't know if that's live yet. It wasn't live last week, um, but they will have all the plan offerings that are available to you. 
Um, so you can do that as well. Um, and then I would, again, encourage you to call 1-800-MEDICARE um, if you have specific questions about your situation. That's great, because I think a lot of people are not so savvy about all the websites and um, kind of have a hard time navigating through them. So it would be nice if they could actually talk to someone that might be able to help them through I, that. So thank you for those I numbers. Agree. And also, yeah, I, I'd encourage and you. And again, your doctor, again, that's doctors right. as well. Yeah, yeah. And once again, that's Medicare.gov, uh, Medicare Plan Finder, perhaps, if it's active, and then 1-800-MEDICARE for those of you trying to keep track of this. Um, yeah, Medicare okay, Plan Finder question. will be active. It just may not be okay. yet. It will be active by okay. the 15th, though, for sure. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Liza. Liza is coming to us from South Carolina. Liza, you're on the line. Hi. Hello? Oh. You're on, thank Liza. Good. Oh, thank you for taking my call. And um, I have uh, diabetic type 2, and I'm trying to control it with lifestyle changes, especially diet. I don't take insulin yet, and um, I'm just trying to uh, use the uh, glucose uh, the continuous glucose monitor, Lifestyle Libra 2, and I to monitor my high and low glucose reading, and I really love it. And um, my problem now is uh, Medicare uh, doesn't cover it if I'm not on insulin. And out-of-pocket is very expensive you know, to purchase it. So I wonder whether that, do you have any suggestion that I could acquire it at a, a more reasonable cost? That is something that um, through our work in technology access that the American Diabetes Association is working on to try to get broader access um, and easier access for all type, people with all types of um, diabetes, whether you're on insulin or not, to have access to those um, devices. Um, in the meantime, yeah, without paying out of pocket, you may also want to take a look at the company website to see if they have any benefits there. Um, but um, again, also trying to speak to um, your physician and calling that number again on the back of the Medicare card um, to see um, if you can speak to somebody that might be able to help you. You know, there are changes to Medicare rules um, all the time. Um, but yeah, as of right now, it is, um, you do have to be, um, I believe either that you either have to be taking insulin or, or type 1 um, state that you're type one. So I do understand that that is a challenge. So this is Carla, and actually um, I work with people with this all, problem all the time. It's, it's kind of the million-dollar question across the nation. So providers are really working towards helping Medicare um, and other insurances recognize the advantage of using a continuous glucose monitor. Um, when Freestyle came out, because it's lots less expensive than some of the other options, um, there was hope that it would be covered, but it's a huge um, expense if public insurance covers it for everyone with prediabetes and diabetes that is not on insulin. And at this point, even though I certainly know that individually it's a big benefit to some people, if you look at the research, um, the research doesn't really support that changes happen in A1Cs, and that's kind of the um, the gold standard for saying, well, then we're not going to fund it. So, so we'll see what the future is, but there's certainly a lot of um, people nationally uh, working on that, including the American Diabetes Association. So hopefully we'll see something move forward, or at least a copay on it, so it's not quite so expensive. Um, an interesting question coming in from Gloria, and I don't know if we can answer this, but um, it, I think it's an interesting question that needs to be mentioned. Um, this is coming in from Gloria from New York. Uh oh. Gloria, are you on the line? Uh oh. 
Sounds like there's a lot of noise in the background. I, I will ask the question for you. If you are you on now? Can you? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What's your question, Gloria? Uh, I wanted to know. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I can hear you. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. What I wanted to know is when the, the uh, prescription drugs first come out, um, can you go to Canada or Mexico to buy them? Because they're exorbitantly expensive, like thousands of dollars, like Ribelsis, for example. I mean, do you know if they're available? Maybe I should say that. To, to clarify, you mean that are they... Uh are some of these new medications available in other countries where you could go exactly. and pick them up for less? Yeah. So, okay. Oh, yeah. Laura and Laura, you want to try that one? That's not something, yeah, that's not something that the ADA um, can speak to. Um, you'd want to talk to your physician and um, and figure out what's the best medications for yourself, but the ADA is not um, currently engaging in the price of medications outside of the country. And our standards of care, we base um, all of our advocacy around access to medications based on FDA approvals and ADA standards of care. And currently there is not any federal law that allow for um, states to transport medications from other countries into the United States at a cheaper price. So we're not engaging in that type of advocacy right now, um, and unfortunately can't comment on costs, or nor are we um, actively engaging in advocacy around costs of medications in other countries. Thank you. Good answer. Another question is, what does out-of-pocket maximum mean on my insurance policy? Um, I can take that as well. So the out-of-pocket maximum um, when you sign up for your plan, whether it's um, a Advantage plan or for Medicare or a a state plan or a self-insured plan, you're going to have an out-of-pocket maximum. And that's the amount that you're responsible for paying to meet your deductible. And once you've paid that amount, they call that kind of your – then everything after that is covered at certain percentages of things. But the the out-of-pocket maximum is the maximum amount that you have to pay for services to get to your deductible. And it should be clearly outlined in your plan. And if you're not sure, you can call your insurance plan and they will tell you. Great. Thank you. Jeannie, Jeannie from North Carolina has a question. Yes, if you're uh, seeing white streaks, I was wondering if this could uh, be related to cataracts. And for you to go to a doctor, would you definitely need to have insurance coverage in play? So that's a good question. Um, Some physician groups and things have a cash plan where you can pay for those things. Um, so you would want to call where you would be receiving your care and ask if they allow um, for you to be treated there without having an insurance and what that cost is. You would definitely want to ask for that in advance before you booked any appointments if they take people without insurance and what would that cost be. So you can, you can always make a point to see the physician. It's just how that's going to be covered. If you want to pay cash, you can certainly do that. But as Laura says, it's a good idea to call and find out how much it would be so you know. It sounds like you need to go in if you're seeing white streaks. So I would encourage you to do so. Um, okay, we have time for one more question. We're going to take a question from Susan from South Carolina. Yes, thank you for taking my call. Um, I have straight Medicare and Aetna as a supplement, and my Part D is with Humana. And my doctor just recently um, changed me from metformin and glimepiride to Invacana. And I checked through Humana, and the Invacana is like $545 for a 30-day supply. Um, I can't afford that. 
I was wondering, I saw online where there is a patient assistance program that you can fill in information. If you go through the patient assistance program, does that affect your Part D through Humana or put you in the donut hole or whatever? That's a really good question. It won't have any impact. Um, I believe on your specific plan, you again might want to call your um, Part D plan again and make sure. Laura mentioned this. Laura Keller mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, the the only issue with the patient assistance programs is that they're not long term. So first, I think you you might want to check with the manufacturer of that drug. Um, and see how long they allow you to receive assistance on that. Um, and then, you know, again, talk to your doctor about what might be a better option or see if your doctor is able to contact your insurance company and see if there are other ways, um, you know, either other drugs that may be less expensive or if there are, or if perhaps the cost, um, Humana is saying the cost of that drug is high because, Maybe you're not. I just want to. I, I think I would check to make sure that that they are aware that you know you are a Part D um, patient. Um, you know there might be some sort of uh, you know physician referral um, that might need to happen if if that's the case. But you might need to check into that because that seems awfully high for a Part D plan. Thank you. So I'm going to ask each of you individually to give us two take-home points that you want to get give people on insurance and um, access. So Laura Keller, why don't you go first? What are two tips you want people to take home from this discussion? Yeah, when you're looking at what plan to select, um, make sure to... Um, ask or call, sometimes they have it online, for your specific medications to see if they cover those. The other thing uh, to think about is while some plans have a lower monthly price, they may not cover or have as good of coverage for diabetes, supplies, education, uh, medications. So make sure you think about that. And often when you're looking at healthcare plans, you think about the monthly cost, but your out-of-pocket costs, your co-insurance costs, and things, and how much they cover your prescriptions need to be factored in, because you might have a better plan overall. If you spend a little bit more a month, you might get better coverage based on your needs. So make sure to really take the time to think about those things when you're looking at plans. Great. Thank you. And Laura Friedman, one or two tips? Yeah, well, that I, I want to echo those two tips that, that Laura Keller said. Um, I, I totally agree. I also um, want people to uh, remind, remember, especially those who are on Medicare, that the Medicare open enrollment period for the next plan year, which is uh, calendar year 2022, will run from October 15th through December 7th. Um, if you are looking um, to change or look at Medicare Advantage plans, that open enrollment period actually doesn't begin until January 1st of 2022. Um, again, that will run from January 1st of 2022 through March 31st of 2022. Um, so those dates, I think, are really important if you're looking to um, add or, or change any coverage to your current plan. Thank you. And I want to thank the audience for joining us today and, um, and also our, our guest speakers. Um, consider staying online or on the phone to complete a short five-question survey. We want to hear from all of you and hope you will take a few minutes to provide us with your useful feedback. The American Diabetes Association website is www.diabetes.org as well as health, or www.healthcare.gov for general information. To help you feel confident about your ability to manage your diabetes and heart health, we encourage you and your loved ones to talk to your doctor and dietitian about your risk. Go to knowdiabetesbyheart.org and learn more. Register for the next event at diabetes.org forward slash experts. Sign up for diabetes education near you 
and sign up for ADA's Free Living with Type 2 Diabetes program. And don't forget to get your flu shot this fall. All of these links are on our Ask the Experts registration webpage, diabetes.org forward slash experts. If you have any questions about this event, want resources to find diabetes education classes in your area, or would like to receive an information packet to learn more about living with type 2 diabetes, you are welcome to contact us at askada at diabetes.org or call to speak with our member of our call center at 1-800-342-2383. Thriving with Diabetes takes a village, and we're here to support you. Special thanks to our experts, Laura Keller and Laura Friedman. I'm Carla Cox, and on behalf of the ADA team, we want to thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to connecting with you at our next Ask the Experts event on October 12th, Prepping for Travel with Diabetes at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Please stay on the line for a few more minutes and take our five-question survey to help us planning for the future. Understanding insurance can be a huge challenge. We will discuss, we, we did discuss the terminology and use policy selection to give you tips how to find the best product for you. Here's our survey. We'll start with question number one. Overall, how satisfied you were, with, were you with today's event, health insurance planning? Use a scale from one to five, with one being not at all satisfied and five being very satisfied. Press 1 for not at all satisfied. Press 2 for somewhat dissatisfied. Press 3 for neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. Press 4 for somewhat satisfied. And press 5 for very satisfied. I'll ask that question again. Overall, how satisfied were you with today's event, health insurance planning? Use a scale from 1 to 5 with 1 being not at all satisfied and five, being very satisfied. Press one for not at all satisfied. Press two for somewhat dissatisfied. Press three for neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. Press four for somewhat dissatisfied. And press five for very satisfied. So basically one to five with five being very satisfied. Now to question number two. What is coinsurance? Press 1 for a monthly charge. Press 2 for a term for Medicare coverage. Press 3 for the percentage of covered services that you are required to pay after your deductible is met. Press 4 for the flat dollar amount you pay your health care providers for covered services. And press 5 for I don't know. Question number 2 again. What is coinsurance? Press 1 for a monthly charge. Press two for a term for Medicare coverage, Medicaid coverage. Press three for the percentage of covered services that you're required to pay after your deductible is met. Press four for the flat dollar amount you pay your health care provider for a covered service. And press five for I don't know. Question number three. What do people with diabetes need in their health insurance plan? Press one for diabetes supplies, press two for prescriptions, press three for diabetes education, press four for screening and services required by treating physician, and press five for all of the above. Question number three again. What do people with diabetes need in their health insurance plan? Press one for diabetes supplies, press two for prescriptions, Press three for diabetes education. Press four for screening and services as required by a treating physician. And press five for all of the above. And we have two more questions. Question number four. As a result of this event, how likely are you to schedule a visit with your healthcare provider to talk about the link between heart disease and diabetes? Press one for not likely. Press two for somewhat likely. And press three for very likely. Once again, question number four, as a result of this event, how likely are you to schedule a visit with your healthcare provider to talk about the link between heart disease and diabetes? Number one, not likely. Press two for somewhat likely. And press three for very likely. 
And our last question today, as a result of this event, how likely are you to sign up for our con- or to continue to participate in a diabetes self-management education program? Remember, diabetes education programs usually require a referral from a healthcare provider. Press one for not likely, press two for somewhat likely, and press three for very likely. And once again, question number five, as a result of this event, how likely are you to sign up for or continue to participate in a diabetes self-management education program? Remember, diabetes education programs usually require a referral from a healthcare provider. Press one for not likely, press two for somewhat likely, and press three for very likely. Thank you for staying online to answer these questions. We appreciate you participating in this Ask the Expert event. We look forward to seeing you on October 12th. In the meantime, be well. Thank you.